Okay. Um. Don't look, don't let me forget to pass out the roll in a couple of minutes. So we have a um we have this one homework. This is very short. There's like six problems. Um, on this um, this homework on uh, limits and continuity. So this is really in a way kind of a formality. Um, talking about limits, of course, is important in calculus because all of our uh, theoretical results are derived from limits or based on limits. But um, and then uh, so many of our uh, of also of the important results in calculus depend on uh, functions being continuous, and this is true in um, this is true in calculus three, uh, uh, just like it is back in calculus one and two. So we really do have to discuss this, but we're not going to dwell on this, right? So there's just um, uh, uh, just a few problems here. So that's due this evening, um, and then a more important homework is the one on partial derivatives because this is really a, a, a key topic in the a, really a key topic in the class. Um, and so we had done a, 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 um, a lot with partial derivatives last time. We're going to finish up today with that and then get into this uh, a subject of directional derivatives, which is just a elaboration on uh, uh, partial derivatives. Okay. Um, and analytically, uh, 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 these topics are going to be easy to deal with. So what I mean with pencil and paper, based on your knowledge of calculus one, you'll be able to uh, carry out the operations, <laughs> solve the problems on paper that are asked for, I think, in these homework assignments. Um, they won't be uh, 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 um, difficult, except there are going to be a couple of uh, formulas, theorems that you will need to recall. They're not difficult to recall, but you will need to uh, 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 use those uh, uh, in this, particularly in this um, uh, this homework for uh, on directional derivatives. But they're they're not difficult formulas. Uh, 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 we're not going to derive them. We're not going to prove them, but we're certainly going to use them. Um, now, however, uh, graphically or geometrically, <laughs> uh, partial derivatives, or especially these directional derivatives and gradients, are going to be N not conceptually difficult to understand geometrically, but but in practice, trying to uh, um, understand specific problems geometrically is going to be hard, uh, just because it's so difficult to uh, uh, graph things uh, in three dimensions, so difficult to work with the geometry in three dimensions. But we're going to give it a try because um, uh, because we do want you to at least conceptually understand what's happening. Um, um geometrically uh, um right okay even though you can do things very probably very uh, easily on pencil and paper do want you to understand at least uh concept or, or try to understand as best possible conceptually what's what you're really doing um uh, when you're doing things with pencil and paper so i don't know if that was reassuring but it should be reassuring because i so i think the homework problems will be easy to execute okay uh, is what i'm saying yeah uh, analytically um all right uh do you have any uh questions about things so uh, so we'll be able to finish the uh, the partial uh, we're going to finish the partial derivatives uh, notes quickly so this homework will be uh, completely uh, uh, ready to finish um uh and then uh then we'll go on to directional derivatives but do you all have any any things you want to ask here right at the start I do, we do have some, uh, I, 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 I've got some seat work for you today because I do want you to do some of these uh, 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 these problems in class because they're easy to carry out. Um, and we're going to start with one right now, actually, as kind of a recall practice for what we were doing uh, uh, last time. Okay. Um, so remember, we were uh, finishing last time partial derivatives talking about applications of partial derivatives to concavity. Um, and so... You use second partial derivatives uh, uh, to um, uh, uh, explore concavity of uh, 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 functions of two variables. And um, let's see. Uh, now, remember, uh, second partial derivatives are a little bit complicated <laughs> in three dimensions because um, you have uh, you have so many options, right? So you have uh, 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 the uh, the second partial derivative with respect to x twice. You have the second partial derivative with respect to y twice, 
And then you've got these so-called mixed partial derivatives where first you take the derivative with respect to X and then you take the derivative with respect to Y. That's F sub X, Y uh, in, uh, in modern uh, notation. And then, but then you can also do that in the reverse direction. So you can take, uh, in the reverse order, I mean, so you can take the, the partial with respect to Y and then the partial with respect to X, that's F sub Y, X, okay? And, um, and you would think that would tell you something slightly different, but remember, it turns out that the uh, a partial derivative uh, uh, with respect to X and then Y, F sub X, Y turns out to be equal to the partial derivative with respect to Y and then X, okay? So in a sense, you really only have three second uh, uh, partial derivatives, F, X, X, F, Y, Y, and F, X, Y, because F, X, Y, and F, Y, X turn out to be the same under just very simple conditions. I think it's just the function has to be continuous. Um, uh, so anyway, however, uh, uh, the second partial derivatives with respect to X twice and Y twice, those are the ones that we're going to use to help us with, uh, uh, at least initially here, to help us with understanding concavity of a function. So let's look at this example. So we want to find the concavity of this function at this particular point, okay? So when I say the concavity, I want to, what I mean is, is the a function concave up? Uh, 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 so is the graph concave up or is the graph concave down at this particular point? I think that is a point on the graph of this uh, uh, function of two variables. You can check it by plugging in the zero and the minus two. I hope it turns out that uh, when you do that, um, uh, Z turns out to be four fifths, okay? Uh, otherwise that point is not on the graph, but I think it is, all right? And so we want to know what is the concavity of this surface, right? In the X direction, right? And then also in the Y direction, okay? So remember, just like with, uh, 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 just like with uh, uh, whether the surface is rising or falling, right? The concavity of the surface depends on which direction you're traveling from a particular point. And uh, and that's much more complex in uh, 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 in three dimensions than it is in two dimensions, right? So uh, we're only going to think about what's the concavity in the direction of the x-axis parallel to the x-axis. What's the concavity uh, in the direction of the y-axis that is parallel to the y-axis? Is the curve uh, uh, concave up or down in this direction, right? Is the curve concave up or down in this direction? So what do you need in order to answer that question? So that's what I'm saying. Can, can, uh, uh, ge geometrically, it's kind of hard to describe, right? Or hard to think about. But actually, analytically, on paper, this is a very easy question to answer. What do you use to answer this question? Yeah, you just use the second partial derivatives, right? So to, uh, to find the concavity in the x direction, you just calculate f sub x, x, right? the uh, uh, second partial derivative with respect to x twice. And then to find out the concavity in the y direction, you just calculate the uh, the uh, second partial derivative with respect to y, right? Okay. Um, so that means you have to do some differentiation. But I've simplified this for you because we already calculated f sub x. So we already know the first partial derivative with respect to x. So just calculate the second partial derivative with respect to x. And then also, we also calculated f sub y the first partial derivative with respect to y. So calculate the second partial derivative with respect to y, and then just plug that uh, point into those two uh, uh, second partial derivatives. And of course, what are you looking for once you plug this point in, uh, 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 into uh, that, those second partial der uh, derivatives? You're gonna uh, evaluate that and get a, get a number. What are you looking for from that number? Yeah, whether it's positive or negative, right? It's exactly like it is in calculus one. You just want to know, is that second partial derivative positive or negative? If it's positive, that means the surface is concave up in a particular direction, right? If it's negative, that means the surface is concave down in a particular direction. And then we'll we'll look at, again at the graph of this and see if our results confirm to what we see on the graph. But the graph here of this uh, surface is kind of not that interesting a graph, so... We may have to squint a lot to see if, <laughs> to see if the surface really does confirm to what we think our uh, our analytical results are. But our analytical results have to be valid, right? So, um, so we'll 
We'll just see what, what we can see there, right? All right, so you're going to do that. You're going to calculate the second partials. I already calculated the first partials for you. And then you just want to plug in this point. Remember, you don't plug in the four-fifths, right? Just plug in the zero and the minus two for the X and the Y, right? Okay. Um, and see what you see what you get out of that. This is a little test to see kind of this, right? Okay. Yeah, but you say you know, why is it constant? So, exactly. Yeah, remember, when you're different, uh, differentiating with respect to one of the variables, holding the other one constant, right? So you're thinking of the other one as just being a number. So, this is some. Yeah. I was just going to say here. That's what you said. Okay. 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 See, I told you this was uh, this is easy, right? You guys are all experts at differentiation. And this is very easy differentiation because this is, again, what's called the rational function. So this is just a polynomial divided by, a well, a constant is also a polynomial, but that's a rational function. Those are usually easy to um, differentiate, although sometimes it requires the quotient rule, but not here, all right? Um, no quotient rule required there. All right, let's see what, um, I think most people got something so let's see what we got for f sub x, x. Um, and so uh, 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 so just in general, that would be uh, what formula here? Well, you just take the derivative of 2x, right, with respect to x. So that's 2. And then just take the derivative of 2xy with respect to x. So since you're thinking of y as being a constant, this is going to be the derivative of that term with respect to x is just going to be 2y, right? Okay, um, and then you can just keep the, uh, then you can just keep the five. Um, what's the other, um, what's the other uh, 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 notation uh, for this? You could also write um, using this, this classical notation, you could write it this way. <clears throat> that also would mean the uh, second derivative there, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, now, what about for, um, or you could use z here instead of f, just looking at something to use for as the name of the function. 
So you could put Z because Z is usually the output variable, right? So you could put Z here, or you could put the X, Y in there also if you if you wanted to write it a little more. What about the second derivative with uh, respect to Y? What does that turn out to be? Well, so how do we differentiate uh, this formula with respect to Y? So X squared, right, is going to be a constant since we're thinking of X as being a constant, right? So when you differentiate a constant here, that's going to be zero. Uh, for the second term, you just get what? Two? Oh, so this is um, this is constant, actually. Oh, so we know in the Y direction, right? Okay, in the Y direction, since this number is positive, it looks like in the Y direction, this surface is going to be concave up, right? So let's see if that looks like that's true. And for the x direction now, we'll actually have to evaluate, right, uh, f sub x, x at the input 0 minus 2. But when you plug uh, 0 and minus 2, right, into this uh, into this formula, correct? Is that, that turns out to be minus 2 fifths, right? All right, so um, that's less than 0, right? So that means that in the x direction, Apparently, just different, right? This uh, uh, this curve is uh, concave down. So you can see you can have both types of concavity, right? Uh, at the same point, right? Just depending on which direction you're traveling from the point. So if you're traveling uh, parallel to the x-axis, that curve apparently is concave down, right? But if you're traveling parallel to the y-axis, that curve is concave up, okay? So you have kind of a unique uh, point there, um, this point zero minus two. Let's see uh, what that looks like. So I think this is the surface. I think this is the surface because we've looked at this surface before and I think I, I, I tried to pick it out. So I think that is zero and minus two uh, on the X and the Y axis. So apparently that's four fifths on the uh, on the z-axis, right? You can see very clearly that parallel to the y-axis, right? If you move along this surface parallel to the y-axis, you're moving along this grid line. And so uh, that is pretty clearly concave up, right? So that's confirmed. But if you move parallel to the x-axis, you can't see very well on this graph what's happening. That looks like it's flat, right? Can you see that if you're moving this direction? It looks like from this angle, it looks like that um, that surface is flat, meaning it would have concavity zero, right? But that's apparently not true, okay? So uh, uh, that's just an illusion. Actually, this surface is, uh, this curve is concave down some, okay? Uh, you just can't see it very well. I think it's because the... Um, we have such a large range of numbers on the Z axis here, right? This this is zero to 30 on the Z axis. So I think this uh, curvature uh, is compressed. So you cannot see it very well uh, from this uh, uh, graph, all right? Um, that concavity parallel to the X axis, but it is concave down. Um, okay, uh, you can see it a little bit better on this edge, right? See this edge of the surface? Parallel to the x-axis is definitely concave down, right? See that edge, and uh, but this 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 uh, 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 portion of the uh, surface is also concave. All right, so um, that's um, see, not hard. Yeah. Uh, is that a um, is that really a local minimum? Maybe it kind of is it. Maybe it kind of is right. Let's see if I can find my mouse here. Yeah, because yeah, it's a minimum. Well, it's not a local minimum though, right? See, along this curve, it is kind of maybe sort of at a minimum, right, or close to a minimum, but. Um, not in this direction, right? Okay, not in this direction. Um, uh, in this direction, see, it's concave down, right? So that's actually kind of 
a peak right there because you know it's concave um, down. So remember, how did we look for those? Um, remember last time how we looked for those uh, 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 those uh, uh, minima or maxima? One thing we tried, we're going to get into this more carefully. Yeah, that's right. So we looked at the first derivative in both directions and set it to zero and see, see if we could locate a point like that. So here you have the two first derivatives, right? So you could try setting those equal to zero and then look for simultaneous solutions to these two equations. So you want values for X and Y that would make both of these equations uh, zero. Okay, um, that's going to be a little bit tricky to uh, find, I think, simultaneous solutions to these equations. But you could uh, you could get rid of the fives very quickly, maybe solve this first equation for X and then substitute that for X in the second equation. OK, and then try to solve for and then try to solve for Y. Um, going to get a little bit messy. Well, darn it. Now that I brought it up, I'm curious about that. So let's. Um, Let's play with that for a second. So you see what I said, okay? Set the first derivative to zero, right? In both directions. And then, um, because, you know, at a, a minimum or a maximum, right? You have to have a, 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 a flat curve, right? So we're trying to make the curves flat in both directions simultaneously. Now, that's in the direction of the x-axis and in, in the direction of the y-axis. But remember, you have lots of other directions as well. So I might be going on a wild goose chase here and using this technique to look for those um, that uh, uh, you know that peak point or that valley point. Uh, let's see what happens though. So um, I said take that first equation. Well, first from these two equations, multiply both sides by five. So get rid of the denominators because that's just going to be um, annoying us, right? So you've got these two equations. And now I suggested try solving the first equation for x, but actually it's very easy to solve for y, right? Because um, how would you solve that for y? Just shift this term, just shift the 2x over. So you have 2xy equal minus 2x, right? And now divide both sides by 2x. So you get what? Y is equal to, oops, minus one. Oh, nice. Okay. So Y is minus one. And if Y is minus one, then let's plug that into the second equation. So you get X squared minus two is equal to zero. And I think that means, what does that mean? X is equal to plus or minus the square root of two, which is approximately 1.4. Oh, so maybe um, maybe um, minus one on the y-axis and positive 1.4 on the x-axis. So maybe we have a peak or a valley there. Can we find that point here? Minus one on the y-axis. This is minus one on the y-axis right there. I think it corresponds to this grid line. It's very faint. And then 1.4 on the x-axis would be about right here. Ooh, so it says that point. Hmm. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> I can't tell. All right. <laughs> so uh, that's clearly not uh, 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 that's clearly not a peak or a valley, right? Okay. But it could be where uh, 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 this curve is minimum and this curve is uh, maximum simultaneously. Right. That's called a saddle. All right. Yeah, a saddle point. So you really don't have a, a true maximum or a minimum, but the directional, uh, 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 but the uh, 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 the uh, slope in the y direction and the slope in the x direction both zero. Okay. So uh, uh, the the curve, this curve is kind of peaking out, and this curve is kind of um, reaching a valley at the same time. We'll see more examples of saddle points um, a little bit later on because we are going to be looking for maxima and minima on these on these surfaces. Okay, but we're going to talk about that more carefully uh, a little bit later on. Um, okay, 
maybe our pictures will look better. So it'll be easy to understand what we're easier to understand what we're talking about. All right. Now let's bring up the next problem then. Okay. Um, and that is, um, uh, so we know how to find the uh, slope, right? In the direction of the X axis or in the direction of the Y axis. But suppose you want to know the slope of the surface in some arbitrary direction. So some direction other than the X axis and the Y axis. Okay. So remember, the first partial derivative with respect to x, that will give you the slope in the direction of the x-axis, right? And the first partial derivative with respect to y, that will give you the slope in the direction of the y-axis. But suppose you want to find, uh, uh, again, a slope in some arbitrary direction, right? Other than parallel to the x or parallel to the y-axis. First, you need some method for specifying what direction you're talking about, right? Okay. So, you know, it's easy to understand, oh, the direction parallel to the x-axis or the direction parallel to the y-axis. But how do you specify some arbitrary direction, you know, that not parallel to one of these axes, right? That's where vectors are going to be helpful, all right? So we're going to use vector to specify the direction in which we're looking for the slope of the surface, okay? So we're going to use vector for that purpose. Um, I have an example here, but let's skip this example. This is just calculating uh, partial derivatives. Okay, so um, we don't need to do that again right now. All right. So, uh, so we're going to use a. So, what what this text is saying here is what I what I just said. We're going to use a, a a vector in this example. We're going to call it the vector u. That's frequently the, the name for the vector that we use to specify direction, right? And so we'll be looking for, um, uh, 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 again, the a slope of the surface in the same direction parallel to that vector instead of parallel to the x-axis or parallel to the or parallel to the y-axis. Now, the way we're going to uh, describe this geometrically is um, this is very similar to what what, what we did before when we were talking about slopes of surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, I'm going to create a vertical plane. That, when I say vertical, I mean it's it's perpendicular to the xy plane. So it's straight up and down, okay, parallel to the x-axis, right? So I'm going to create a vertical plane, but I want that plane to be a, a parallel to this given vector u, which I'm using to specify as the direction in which I'm trying to calculate the slope of the surface, right? Let me draw, let me show you a picture of this because that's a lot of words. And if you don't see a picture, it won't make sense, right? So suppose we're looking at this surface. I don't know what the formula for this surface is, right? Looks like some sort of, sort of spherical formula, right? Or some sort of ellipsoid formula, right? So we're thinking of this surface. And here's just a point I picked out on the, here's just a point I picked out on the, surface okay all right so I, I so i'm going to be starting from that particular point in determining the slope all right um now look um that's a point on the surface but if you just isolate the uh the um the the x uh, uh zero y zero coordinates of course that gives you a point on the x y plane right okay so x sub zero y sub zero that's just a point on uh the x y plane all right now Let's say we want to find the slope of the of this surface in a particular direction other than parallel to the x and the y axis. All right. So to specify that direction, what you will do is you will say, okay, I want the direction, I'm sorry, I want the slope in the same direction as some vector. Okay. So we'll use a vector to specify the direction. So in this picture, here's the vector uh, u, right? Okay. <clears throat> Of course, right, uh, uh, u has a, uh, uh, now keep in mind, u is a vector in the xy plane, right? It's not a three-dimensional vector. It's a vector in the xy plane, right? And um, so, of course, it has a, its own direction, right? How do, we, uh, how do we indicate the direction of a two-dimensional vector, a vector in the xy plane? How do we measure its direction? Do you recall? You look at what, the angle? between the vector and the x-axis, right? Remember that, okay? So uh, in this picture, here's the here's the 
direction of my vector u, it's this angle thing. Now, uh, take a, a form a plane, okay, form a plane here, all right, that's uh, perpendicular to the xy plane, all right? So do you see that plane that I've, that I've drawn in here? It's perpendicular to the xy plane, but it's parallel to the vector u, all right, parallel to the vector u. I want to make sure that this plane, however, cuts through the surface at this point. That's the point that I was trying to determine slope at, right? Okay, so when you cut that plane through this surface, of course, what is it for? See, this is a surface, right? So you take this plane, right? This is a, 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 a vertical plane. I'm sorry, this is a plane perpendicular to the, the XY plane, right? Okay, but remember, it's parallel to this given direction vector u. So you take this plane and you slice it to the sur through the surface. And what do you get when you slice that plane through the surface? You get a curve, right? Okay. So I tried to I tried to draw a picture of that curve. Does that look like that's probably sort of correct, right? Take this plane and slice it through the surface here, get a curve just like this. Okay. That's just a two-dimensional curve, though, right? That's just a two-dimensional curve. And of course, it has a slope, right? So the slope of that two-dimensional curve is going to take that to be the slope of the surface, right? Of course, it's the slope of the surface in what direction? In the direction of this vector, right? So um, now thinking at this particular point, how many directions can you, you know, create from that point, right? Or that point, well, maybe that point, yeah, it's hard. So how many directions can you create from this point? Well, you have, you know, a whole a, a rotation, right? Okay, a sort of rotation of directions. You this picture we just chose this particular. So different uh, uh, directions, of course, will give different slopes, possible that type of surfaces. In this case, though, if the surface is a sphere. I don't think how matters how you take the same slope. Okay? I don't think that works a sphere. But uh, if it's not a sphere, slopes in directions. Yeah, of course. So this is all nice visually. But um, how do you execute this in practice? How do we actually do this, right? Um, on paper. Right, so nice to Um, but it's this curve, right? And, and, and so on. So, uh, well, the, the answer turns out to be seen with simple, okay? So it gives us a really, a really useful and beautiful uh, uh, result to your theorem. Uh, I, I pointed out the number of this theorem because it's referred to in the homework. So they're going to say use um, theorem 13.9. This is just the directional derivative theorem, all right? So here's what it says, okay? If you want to compute the derivative of a surface, right, in a particular direction, you need to specify that direction by a vector. Remember, this is a two-dimensional vector, however, okay? It's not a three-dimensional vector, it's a two-dimensional vector. Two-dimensional vectors, you can specify the direction with one number, right? And that is the angle between the vector and the x-axis, okay? Usually we call that thing, right? So and here's what you need to do. Figure out what the angle, what the direction is of your direction vector, okay? If you have that vector written in unit form, it's just going to be the coefficients of the... Um, uh, the i component right and the j component that will tell you the cosine of your uh, of your direction angle and the sine of your direction angle. Then just take that cosine and sine and multiply it by the partial derivatives, and that will give you the derivative of your surface in the direction of your given vector. Okay which of course has its own direction, right? Which corresponds to this angle uh, theta.
Oh, isn't that simple? Right, that's so easy. Um, by the way, <laughs> let's check this for a moment because um, he said if you want the slope in the direction of the x-axis, you want the slope in the direction of x-axis, all you need is what? The, this, right? Just the f sub x, correct? Don't need this at all. So does that correspond to this formula? In the direction of the x-axis, what is the vector of p? So in the direction of the x-axis, what is your direction vector? What vector has the same direction as the x-axis? Look in this picture. It's just I, right, okay? It's just I, right? So in the direction of the x-axis, your direction vector is just I, correct? Which, if you write that out uh, uh, in full uh, uh, form, you would have 1 times I plus 0 times J, right? Okay. So does that, does that match the formula here then? Let's see. We get... 1 times this plus 0 times this, right? See, uh, uh, if your direction vector is i, you have 1 times i plus 0 times j. So you just take the 1 down, right, and the 0 down, and look what you just get out of that. You just get um, the first derivative with respect to x, right? So indeed, if you're looking for the direction with uh, 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 to, uh, along the x-axis, right, the slope along the x-axis, this formula gives it to you, right? Just gives you the first partial derivative. What if you're looking uh, uh, parallel to the y-axis? Well, what's your direction vector in that case? So what vector gives you the same direction as the y-axis? J, right? Okay, so then you're... Uh, a direction vector would be just j, which is 0 times i plus 1 times j. So if you take that 0 and 1 and plug them into this uh, formula, you get 0 here, 1 here, or in other words, you get the partial group with respect to y. Um, so this does confirm to what we know so far about um, slopes and directions, right? This theorem. But it works for other directions as well. Okay, so that's the cool thing. All right, so 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 to apply this, what do you need to do? What do you need to know? Well, you need to know the direction in which you're going to uh, calculate your slope, right? Okay, uh, 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 you give you're given that in the form of a vector, right? You need that vector in unit form. You need that vector in unit form, so you can read off the coefficients of the i and j because that's going to be the cosine of your uh, direction angle and the sine of your direction angle. Then just plug those into this formula. You've got it. There's the direction. Uh, there's the directional derivative. Uh, again, denoted this way. All right. This, this notation is slightly different than the fx fy notation, but you just use the capital D here, and then uh, the subscript there is u. Remember that is the direction vector. Remember, this is a derivative, so this is going to be a formula, right? If you want the derivative at a particular location, you have to plug in values for x and y. All right, let's try this then and see if we can apply this. The picture is very difficult. I don't think I, oh, I do have a picture of this one. So let's do it first, and then let's look at the picture. All right, so let's see if we can find the directional derivative for this surface. Um, so that's a quadratic surface. Uh, we want it at the point 1, 2, 2. So apparently that point is on that surface. So if you plug 1 and 2 in for x and y, z will turn out to be 2 uh, in that case. And we want in this direction, 60 degrees from the positive x-axis. 60 degrees from the positive x-axis. So if you just scribble a little xy plane here, 60 degrees from the, 
this vector that's 60 degrees here, right, from the positive uh, x-axis. So when we look at this in three dimensions, we'll try to convince ourselves that we really have the really have the right picture. But you don't need to have the picture at all because the formula is so powerful, right? Okay. So, uh, so what is the formula for the directional derivative? We'll come back and plug in the. We'll come back and come back in and plug in the actual uh, numbers once we've computed the formula for the directional derivative. So remember, you're going to notate that as d sub u x. Y, right? And so you need here um, the first partial derivative, right? With respect to X. And then the second partial derivative, right? Um, I'm oh, sorry, the first partial derivative also with respect to y. Well, let's see, what are those partial? Let's see, what are those partial derivatives? So what is f sub x? So what is this derivative with respect to, is that too, it's too, almost too easy, right? What is that? Yeah, negative 2x, right? Because this is constant and this will be constant when we take the derivative respect to x, right? And then what's the derivative with respect to y? Also easy, right? Is that what, minus one half y? When you bring the two down times the one fourth, you get one half, right? So you get minus uh, one half y. So let's just fill those numbers in. So we have minus two x times cosine of theta, and then plus, uh, minus one half y times sine of theta. And now you can use that formula, right? Um, in lots of different situations, all you need to do is specify the theta here, right? And then also, of course, uh, 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 choose the point, right? At which you're trying to compute the directional derivative. Choose the point, of course, by choosing the x and y coordinates, right? All right, so let's fill those in for this particular example. Let's see, we wanted... The directional derivative, what, when x was 1 and y was 2, is that correct? The z is kind of meaningless to us, right? Um, and then also, when our direction is a vector that uh, that is 60 degrees, right, from the x-axis. So here's a picture of that vector, right, okay? But you really don't even care about uh, the picture of the vector all you need is the cosine of this angle, right, and the sine of this angle. So, um, so let's start plugging things in. So I have minus 2 times 1 times, well, what's the cosine of 60 degrees here? Do we remember? Is that 1 half? So plug a 1 half in there, right? And then minus uh, 1 half times um, 2 and then times the sine of 60 degrees, which is, what's that, square root of three over two? Don't let me make a mistake here or we'll live to regret it. So what if it, is this minus one? And how much is all of this? Is that minus the square root of three over two? Oh. What is that approximately? Is that like minus one point uh mi minus one point eight or something like that? About huh? One point eight seven? Oh, okay. All right, so so apparently in this direction our surface is Right in this direction, our surface is falling. Um, okay, let's let's look at now. I do have a picture here, so let's look at the picture and see if we kind of got it correct. Right. So let's see if we can put all the um, pieces together. So there's the surface: four minus x squared minus one fourth y squared. So it looks like this. That's a quadratic surface. We have to 
remind ourselves what the name of that type of quadratic surface is. That's a quadratic surface. Here's the point. One, two, two, they're on the surface, right? So, of course, that corresponds to the point one, two, just on the x, y plane, right? And we want in this direction, right, in this direction, uh, 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 and we know it's this direction because we're told uh, 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 we want to go in the direction 60 degrees from the x-axis, right? So here's the x-axis. So, so this line is parallel to the x-axis. It goes 60 degrees, right, from the x-axis starting at this point. Um, and so have a surface in that direction. Try to draw a, a, a line or change it like that. Okay. Um, let's slow. I don't like the way I does that look like that line. <laughs> does that does that look like that? Let's see if I can erase this. Oh, I can. Oh. Oh, they had already drawn it, so I see. So remember, what you're doing is you're going to slice a plane, right? Thinking of slicing a plane surface, slice a, a vertical plane through the surface, right? Which is parallel to this vector. So when I do that, it seems like I can get it. It's like this, and they try to draw a tangent that quite natural. Quite natural. Tangent should look like here, right? See, if you slice a plane through this surface, right, that's at this point that's parallel to this, don't you get something that looks more like this? Then it looks like it's definitely though, uh, this curve is definitely falling. And you know, it's falling in this direction. Um, right. All right, well, let me let y'all try. Oh, by the way, um, what is the, uh, we did we never specified the direction vector. What is the direction vector here? There's a picture of it, but actually what is the, what, what is the, we wrote down the direction vector, what would it be? So in component form, what would it be? Yeah, there you go. One half i plus square root of three over two j, right? Okay, because remember that's um, cosine, right, of your direction times i, correct? Plus sine of your direction times j, right? Okay. So don't forget when you have a two dimensional vector, right, and it's in unit form. And um, cosine is direction, sine. So cosine is direction, sine. Okay, so don't get that test. Um, all right, let me let y'all try one. And you're going to do just almost exactly the same thing. And then, uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if I have a picture of this one. <laughs> all right. Wow. Okay. So, uh, here is the, um, so this is the same formula that we've used it already before, right? So there are already the first partial derivatives are given. So there are the first partial derivatives. Y'all have that written down somewhere from one of our prior examples? This is an example we used a moment ago. That's the same formula. So there's the uh, first partial derivative with respect to x. There's the first partial derivative with respect to y. So here's what I want you to do there. 
right? So we want to we want we want to uh, work from this point two to sixteen fifths, all right? So um, I want you to find the direction vector um, if you're going at a direction forty five degrees from the x axis. So find the direction vector, actually write down what the direction vector is, and then uh, I give the directional derivative, right, okay, uh, at this point in that direction, same direction, is that okay? Okay. I can't get all of that on the screen, so did y'all get the formula already? So this is what we were using before. And then I want the directional derivative in this direction, 45 degrees on the x-axis at this particular point, that point that point's on the surface. Yes. <laughs> what do you need to? There's the original one. It's in your, it's it's what you were using before. So actually these things are all you need, right? The first derivatives, the first partial derivatives are all you need. Yeah, so this is what we, don't, don't worry about the sketch. We're going to look back and see if you can, this direction, this point, right? So. No, I do what Oh, there is a point.
Because I'm seeing the answer here, so anyone can answer this. Uh, I say, yeah. Okay. All right. So if you didn't quite get all the way through it, most people were doing doing it really well, though. All right, so that's excellent. That bodes well for the homework. I think it'll make the homework easier for you, right? So if you want, um, if you want the directional derivative, right? Okay. Um, so remember, the notation there is kind of clumsy, but the direction of in this uh, uh, direction, right, uh, with this vector. Oh, uh, by the way, what was that vector? So remember, the angle was forty-five degrees, right? So you're just going to have um, cosine times 45 degrees, right, times I, right, plus uh, sine of 45 degrees times J. But, of course, sine and cosine of 45 degrees are both the same, so that's nice. So you just here get um, square root of 2 over 2 I, right, plus square root of 2 over 2 times uh, J. So formally, there is your um, there is your direction vector. So that's what the vector, this notation, that's what the vector u really is. But you really don't need to, to really write that down formally, right? Um, because this directional derivative will be the first partial derivative with respect to x, right? Times the uh, cosine of theta, right? Plus first partial derivative with respect to y right, times the um, sine of theta. And since we already had those partial derivatives computed, right, so easy to fill in this uh, these um, formulas. So this was just, what, what was this, 2x plus, was it 2x plus 2y over 5? Is that what the, oh, 2x plus 2yx? over five, uh, and then we'll have cosine of 45 degrees, right? And then um, plus, what was this formula? This one was harder, x squared plus something? x squared plus two y over five times sine of um, 45 degrees. Well, of course, we can simplify this, right? Because we can fill in what the sine and cosine of 45 degrees are and then you know, do a little simplification there. But let's go ahead and jump right to, let's go ahead and use that formula and jump right to what we were looking for, right? Which is the directional derivative at this particular point. Oh, sorry, 2, 2, right? So we get, 
what do these numbers turn out to be? So when you plug two in for X and two in for uh, Y there, does that turn out to be 12? So we have 12 fifths times cosine of 45 degrees, of course, is the square root of two over two plus, and then what, eight fifths? times also square root of two over two. And all those denominators match up. So that's very convenient. So we end up with 20 times the square root of two over 10, which of course is just two times the square root of two. Of course that's positive. So that means indeed in this um, uh, 45 degree direction, this surface is increasing, right? Um, so I do have a, this is the same surface that we've been looking at over and over again. I think I've got a picture of this. So there is, on that surface, there is two on the x-axis and two on the y-axis. I think it's right there on the surface. If we, if we go uh, down uh, vertically uh, down to the x-y plane, corresponds to this point on the x-y plane. So that's two, two on the xy plane and we're going 45 degrees from the x-axis so that would be in this direction right well that's uh, unfortunately we can't see the surface in that direction right but you can tell right that it's going to be uh increasing right um uh along that direction and increasing at a pretty rapid clip right because your directional derivative in that direction is 2.8 so um, uh, so that means when you move one unit in this direction, uh, you know, uh, one unit in this direction, that um, that surface is increasing already by 2.8, right? So that's a healthy uh, slope. Okay. Now, what would you think would be your... Uh, <laughs> what would you think now would be the next question that you would want to ask about um, these slopes? Um, I think it would be, um, okay, I know how to find the slope in a particular direction now, sort of. Well, we've seen at least one example. Um, uh, so I think the natural next question is, how do we figure out which direction is the maximum slope, right? Okay, so how do we determine uh, uh, w which direction to go that would uh, either uh, uh, take us up fastest or uh, bring us down possibly fastest, right? So what's the direction of maximum or minimum slope, okay, from a particular point, right? Which direction should we travel to uh, 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 go up the uh, surface uh, uh, the quickest, or if the surface is falling, right, go down the surface fastest, okay? So uh, uh, instead of trying to find the slope in a particular direction, I want to say, what is the direction that will give us the maximum or the minimum slope, okay? Um, all right, but before we do that, uh, we still need to practice this a little bit. We still need to practice this a little bit more, okay? Although it's pretty easy, right? So uh, let's take a break here. Um, and then we'll look at a couple more examples of finding uh, directional derivatives. Um, so let's pause here for a second, though. And Okay, let's try resuming here. And this is just a variation on the same uh, type of problem. So we want to find the directional derivative for this surface, x squared sine 2y, so this is fun because it's got a sign in it, um, but in the direction of this vector, but we're not indicating here what the uh, what the angle for this direction vector is. We're just giving you the direction vector in standard form, right? In the i uh, j form. So we don't really need to uh, uh, actually calculate what the direction is in terms of uh, degrees or radians. Um, uh, uh, we can just use uh, 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 this direction vector itself um, uh, 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 for that directional uh, derivative formula, except you must have your direction vector in unit form, 
Okay, and this is not a unit vector. If you calculate the magnitude of that vector, it's not a unit vector. So we need to uh, uh, put this in, uh, we need to normalize this. In other words, we need to uh, turn this into a unit vector. So of course, how do you make this into a unit vector? Or the proper way to say that is how do you find the unit vector uh, you know, that's in the same direction as this vector? Um, what do you do, you recall? Yeah, divide by the magnitude, right? So we're just going to uh, find this vector, and this is the one that we'll use. So just divide by the magnitude. Uh, well, that means I need to calculate the magnitude, but um, I think we can do this uh, uh, all at the same time, right? So you'll have 3 divided by the magnitude, but that would be the square root of 3 squared plus a minus 4 squared, right? times i, and then um, um, minus here, uh, 4 over, say, magnitude, right? So that's uh, 3 squared plus uh, negative 4 uh, squared times uh, j. And um, so that gives us um, 3 over 5, I think, right? Uh, 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 and uh, minus 4 over uh, five times j. And now this is really the cosine of the angle of this uh, vector and uh, the four fifths is really the sine of uh, uh, the angle of this vector. So you can use those direct directly right in your directional derivative uh, formula. Um, but we do have to calculate now partial. Derivatives. So let's see what those are. So uh, the partial derivative here uh, um, uh, with respect to x, well, let's see. If we're thinking of y as being a constant, then sine of 2y would also be a constant, right? So that means um, uh, it, it, we're just differentiating the x squared. So you just bring the 2 down, right? So you get 2 times x times the sine of um, 2y. And what about for the partial derivative with respect to y, is that going to be harder? Not really, okay? So again, we're thinking of x squared as being a constant, so we're just worried about differentiating sine. That's pretty easy to differentiate, though, right? Uh, because what's the derivative of sine? Cosine, right? So you just get cosine of 2y, but don't forget the chain rule, right? Because this is not just... Um, we're not just differentiating sine of y, we're differentiating sine of 2y. So you need to multiply in here the derivative of 2y, which is 2, right? So we get uh, 4x squared uh, cosine of 2y. Uh, uh, as the partial derivative with respect to uh, as the partial derivative with respect to y. All right, let's see if we can fill all these things in now. So let's see. Um, before we actually fill in the values for uh, x and y, let's actually go ahead and write down what our directional derivative formula is, right? So let's see, it's 2x uh, sine of 2y, right, times the uh, cosine of theta, but what's cosine of theta? Three-fifths, right? See, you can plug that number in, right? Plus uh, x squared, I'm sorry, 4x squared um, cosine of 2y times the sine of theta, but the sine of theta is minus four-fifths, right? Yes. Uh, all right, so when we took the derivative here with respect to y, right? So this just remains a constant. So this is still there, right? You just have to differentiate sine of 2y. Well, the derivative of sine of 2y is going to be cosine of 2y, correct? But then, oh, I see. Uh, it's just two? Yeah.
Well, I just got real enthusiastic. All right. Um, let, let me leave this first, though, before I actually plug the values in. Let me leave this as sine of theta. And and now let's plug in all of these. Uh, now let's plug in all of these numbers, right? Because we want x to be 1 and y to be pi over 2. Well, let's see if we can get all this filled in here. So I have 2 times 1 times the sine of uh, 2 times pi over 2, right? Oh, that looks nice. Times uh, the cosine of theta, but that's going to be 3 fifths, right, for this uh, vector. And then... Um, plus 2 times uh, 1 squared, right, times the cosine of 2 times pi over 2, and then times this sine, which is minus 4 fifths. Well, let's see. I can do 2 times 1, I think. I know that's 2. What's this? Sine of pi? What is sine of pi? Zero. Yay. So sine of pi is zero times three-fifths. So the three-fifths was kind of useless to me there, right? What about this second term? So I get two times one squared. That's still two times cosine of pi. But what's cosine of pi? Negative one. Is that right? Okay times this minus four fifths. So we end up with eight fifths. Ah, okay. So uh, in this uh, particular direction, the slope of this surface in this particular direction, same direction as this vector, the slope of this surface apparently is eight fifths. Let's take a look at that picture because I've plotted this picture. This is a really wicked curve. This is a really wicked surface x squared sine of 2y, just as you might expect it might be. There it is. Okay, so uh, it's beautiful, All right? There's the surface right there on the x-y plane. There's 1 and uh, pi over 2 and 0. And um, so um, you might not, might not believe it there, but that is the that is the direction vector, okay? It's in this uh, direction. This particular surface. So if you go in this direction, Along this surface, though, how are you going? This direction, up the surface, going up, right? This into this thing here, which is coming at us, so we can't see it. So, so remember, this this vector is flat in the x line. Okay, but when I'm traveling to this point, taking surface in this direction that takes me up this okay it is going up right because the slope is eight fifths right so this direction but, yeah that's what i use i can't i do this a lot so, there are a lot of settings And then had to mess with, um, had to rotate. See, the z axis is not. Uh, and so you can see the surface. The rotation you can do, right? So, so. You have to do it carefully. Take it fast. Uh, next time, maybe I'll try to show you all uh, what, I, what I was plotting that, um, if you want to play with it. Um, okay, so, um, well. Uh, 
All right. Let's let you try one here. So, um, so again, this is the same example we've been using over and over again. I don't think I have, um, I have several pictures, but I don't know if I have a picture specifically. So it's that same surface, x squared plus x squared y plus y squared, right? There are the two partial derivatives. I'm going to find the directional derivative in this direction. And so in the same direction as that vector, right? Same direction as that vector, 2i plus uh, 2i plus j. 2i plus j. So that's like Fifteen degrees or thirty degrees or something like that is the angle. But um, just try doing the just try doing the calculations there. So remember, normalize this right, and then you can use that for um, is that for uh, for coefficients for your sine and cosine in your directional derivative formula. Want at this point one and zero is that a oh uh, oh uh, yeah okay at uh, x one and y zero. Not sure what z.
All right, let's fill in some let's fill in some numbers here. First, let's find out what our normalized direction is, right? Uh, like we did in the previous example. So you're going to have two over um, the magnitude of this vector, right? Which is the, the square root of two squared plus one squared. And then plus one over that same magnitude, square root of two squared plus one squared. Uh, this is times i, and this is times j. So that's what, two over the square root of five i plus one over square root of five j. And all you really care about, of course, are these coefficients, right? Uh, that's what's going into this directional derivative of uh, you know, I don't know if I should include f in front of one and zero, because this is the directional f. That is a lot to write down here. I just dropped the f and put one zero. Um, so remember, that's going to involve calculating the partial derivatives right at these coordinates, right? One, zero, right? Times then the sine and cosine, right? Of the of the of the direction angle, but we have those now, right, from our uh, direction vector in unitized form. So here we would fill in two times the square root of five, right? And then plus that uh, a partial derivative with respect to y evaluated at one zero, right? Uh, times one over uh, square root of five. Uh, but let's so let's calculate what these uh, partial derivatives are at x equal one and y equals zero. Easy to do because we have those formulas, right? So f sub x of one zero. Well, just plug one in for x and zero in for y. So that's two fifths. And then the partial with respect to y at one zero. I'll just plug one zero into uh, this formula, and you get what one fifth. Is it that easy? So I have two fifths times two over square root of five plus one fifth uh, times one over square root of five. So it looks like here we get, um, is that five over five square roots of five? Four plus one? over five square roots of five. So we get one over the square root of five after all of that. Is that it? Is that what y'all got? Something like that, one over square root of five? Okay. So at that point um, on this surface, which we've looked at over and over again, when X is one and Y is zero, um, uh, that surface is increasing in this direction though, right, okay? So in the same direction as this uh, vector, um, that surface is increasing at this rate. I'm gonna stop squared. Did I do something wrong there? Did y'all get one over square root of five? Did you in, invert something there? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so if you if you did well, if we do that at the end, uh, uh, so uh, uh, see what you dropped, Elijah. If you do that in the end, right, multiply top and bottom by square root of five over square root of five, then you would get square root of five for sure. But in the bottom, there's still a five. Well, I ended up getting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. Oh. Yeah, that's something's wrong. You, just from this part? Or from the whole thing? Oh, yeah. So, all right. So, yeah, you should have gotten um, uh, four. Uh, Same. 
<laughs> okay, so here you tried you tried um um rationalizing that denominator by putting here square root of five over square root of five. All right, okay, all right. Um let's um you know there's <laughs> There's there's a lot of controversy over <laughs> this has nothing to do with calculus three this is all arithmetic um so uh, uh so when I was uh, when I was uh, in school your you guys age everyone was very meticulous about um, rationalizing denominators so uh, this answer would not have been acceptable so I would have had to have done what what Elijah suggested there multiply top and bottom by square root of five to make this not an irrational number in the denominator. Okay, square root of, because square root of five is an irrational number. So multiply top and bottom by square root of five and you end up still with an irrational number, but it's not in the denominator. You still have the square root of five there. It doesn't go away. So, all right, but um, it's not really known historically why that came to be accepted practice, all right, okay? <laughs> um, no one really quite knows that, uh, why that was... Uh, uh, why that why that came to habit okay um it could be just to make everyone's answers conform all right so that everyone uh, uh, have the same answers from our problem that's a possibility um another possibility is uh you know it's difficult to do arithmetic with square root of five because it's an irrational number well it's it's much easier to divide uh, uh, this irrational number by five than it is to divide by the irrational number uh, so if you were going to uh, try to uh, turn this into a decimal approximation by hand, right, okay, didn't have calculators, then there might be an advantage of um, putting the square root of five in the top, but that's not known. That's, that was really the motivation, okay? Um, so nobody really knows that, except I guess if you knew somebody, somebody in the 1700s knew this, but that's been lost. Um, okay. So the the let, let me show you quickly just the answer since we're out of time here. This last question, not really have time. Yeah. Well, I mentioned uh, uh, the next question we want to ask is what direction gives the steepest slope? So if you're on a surface, what direction would you go to do the steepest ascent or possibly the steepest? Right. Okay. So on a surface, right from a particular which direction? Gives you the steepest climb or the direction steep set. If that direction, of course, we'll specify that as a vector, right? Because we're going to use vector to specify direction. That direction of steepest ascent, ascent that is called the gradient vector. Okay? So the gradient vector shows you the direction to go from a particular point on a surface to go up the fastest or down the fastest. Here is the formula for the gradient vector, okay? It's so easy. It has unusual notation. So you can shorten the word gradient to just grad here, but that has a thousand paths of statements, right? Or you use this notation. You have this inverted delta, okay? Don't read that as delta. L. So L, F, X, Y, that means great, right? But keep in mind, this is a vector. It's not a number. This is a vector. See that L in front of F, X, Y, that's a vector. Okay. And it's, you know, there's the form of the vector. And so, let's take the uh, first partial respect to X times I plus the first partial respect to Y times A, and that's the fraction of the what that formula is extremely useful because this is very difficult to determine from pictures. Let me show you an example just to finish off here before we actually use it. Um, here's an example that I, I skipped over very quickly because this is just an illustration. So I'm going to say sketch the paths of steepest descent 
or descent from the following points on this surface and see if you can estimate from what you draw um, what is the right vector. So um, let me just try to uh, draw that. So on this surface, y natural log of x plus xy at these points. Let's see if we can figure out just from looking what the steepest descent and descent direction is, and then see if we can sort of draw the vector and it matches that direction. Um, here's the picture, though. So uh, let me see if I can find. There it is. So you can see how complicated this can be, right? Okay. Um, just from looking at the picture. So here's the point. This is the point one zero zero right there. Let's see if we can just. So if you are on this, th 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 that point is on that surface, right? So that point, right, which is on the x-axis, right? That point on the x-axis happens to be on that surface. So if you're traveling on that surface, what do you think is the direction of steepest descent slash descent from that point? I mean, is it this way, this way? Which way do you think is going up or down fastest? Well, uh, no, uh, uh, of course, uh, the tangent line goes through the point in both directions, right? So, so if you're going up fastest in this direction, probably going down fastest in the opposite. Okay? So, what's just the What's just sort of the steepest direction? So, what's just sort of the steepest direction on this surface? At this point? I don't think it's going this way, right? Because that looks like flat, right? Okay. So, right. So, uh, so not going along the x-axis, right? That would. Very hard to see. Is it going on? So I don't think so, right? So you're going up, but you're not going up as fast as you I think it's just like this. I think going up, see that grid line? I think going up that grid line. And that looks the steepest. Right straight up like this. Along the Along the surface. But we can check this. I think going just straight up like this on the surface, I think that's the, um, or down, that's the steepest ascent or descent on that surface from that point. What direction does that correspond to? I think it's, see, what direction in the xy plane does that correspond to think of taking uh, think of uh, uh, projecting this curve down onto the xy plane right so think of the shadow of this curve on the xy plane that is going to correspond to your gradient vector i think it's right here can y'all visualize that see this is on the surface so if you've shown the light down the z-axis, right, and thought of this purpose casting a shadow on the x-y plane, it would be right there is the shadow that cast on the x-y plane. That is the gradient vector. So you're right, David. What is that gradient vector occurring? Choose the light. Okay. So that's the gradient vector. J, right, yeah. I'm thinking J is the this point, what about over here? Wow. That point on that surface is way up there. But if you're at that, wow. what, uh, what direction? See, this point, this point is on the surface. One, two, two. From that point, what's the, looks like steepest ascent or descent? Is it along this grid line, maybe? Or maybe it's just straight up. I don't know. Okay, really hard to uh, see. That's really hard to visualize, right? On that surface, what's the steepest direction 
from that point. Well, thank God we don't have to do that, right? We don't have to try to visualize that because we got the formula, okay? And the formula is really easy to use. It's just what? The partial derivatives times I and J, correct? Okay. Uh, well, let's check those next time. Let's see how. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, don't ever remind me. Okay, well, we're done anyway. So sign this as we leave. If you leave, press sign the attendance. Okay. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. And we'll do these computations, which are the easy part. Uh, thinking about the pictures is the hard part.